Hey guys, it's Lauren. So before we get into things, I just wanted to take this time to like show off these cute little stuff that I got from AliExpress and I'm gonna be decorating them. And while I do that, I'm gonna announce the winners of the art contest that I hosted. So our first winner is Honey Doodles and I just really love this design. It's one of the ones that stood out to me the most and congratulations, they're gonna win the XP Pen Artist 10 second generation. And the second winner is Uquack, and god I just love that name and I love their design too. So this person will be receiving the Gaomon 6S20. And lastly the third winner is Mitsu Tadaki. And this is one of those designs where the, from the moment I saw it I was like I want to draw this character. And so I will be. So congratulations to all the winners. And thank you to everyone who participated. You all did such an amazing job. Give yourselves a pat on the back because you know, you did it. You designed an outfit or a character. You designed something and that is something to be proud of. So if you want to see all the submissions, I have a Google Doc link in the description below. But for this video, I am designing yet another Halloween outfit for one of my characters. This time you could also see Pepe dancing in the background because this was originally supposed to be a frog outfit design because I was like, you know, like, why don't I kind of participate in the prompt of my own contest and design a frog outfit. Then once I got to it, I was just kind of like, you know what, screw it. I'm just going to stick with the Halloween theme that I've been planning with my OCs. This character is named Sydney and she's supposed to be like the most playful character that I have. And I thought that a witch theme would match her. And so I just gave her a dress, witch hat some flowers just to match her vibe because she really likes flowers. I gave her this little like patched up tote bag which is supposed to have potions in it. It doesn't look like potions but they're supposed to be potions. And later on I add some patchwork. I also changed her hair from just normally being down to being some short pigtails which I think match like the vibe of a witch, I guess, for some reason. I don't know. And so here on the left, you can see Sydney's original outfit. And as you can see, she's a pretty colorful character. There's a lot of yellows, uh, the blue of her jeans, and then the pink in her jacket and those are her three main characters because she's supposed to be kid core. And so my idea was just to kind of implement these same colors into this witch outfit just so that it just matched her vibe more. And so I made the skirt blue to kind of imitate a denim skirt. Maybe I would have even just decided to make the skirt denim or just call it denim and I added some patches to it and I think if I went with this idea I would have like added in some um some of like ripped jeans effect kind of but then in the end I decided that it didn't feel halloweeny halloweeny weeny it didn't feel spooky enough and so I went back and I changed the colors you know the purpose of concept art is to just kind of see how all of your ideas turn out and so I mess with the colors a lot. I change it to yellow and then I change it to orange and green and I was like hold up I could just turn her into a pumpkin witch and that's what I did and you know I wasn't satisfied with just yellow either and so I decided to test out another color scheme and for that I just went on patreon and I put up a poll and I also asked around my friends, but for the most part, all of them got pretty even votes. And so I decided with a color scheme that was in between the yellow and more reddish one. So basically orange. So 
Some people have also been asking in the comments about how I learned how to draw bodies and if I have any tips on how to draw bodies or how to get better and honestly, I can safely say that I don't really know what I'm doing. I kind of just like, I have a general idea or concept of how a body looks and I'm kind of just like, okay, um, let me just try drawing it. Like I haven't studied anatomy, so <laughs> there could pro probably be a lot of things wrong with how I draw bodies, but um, I don't know, like I just do it. I don't really do figure drawings either, even though I should. I don't do gesture drawings. I found that I'm kind of bad at doing them because then I tend to hyper focus on something and that's not the point of gesture drawing. I guess my biggest tip is to really just observe bodies. Like observe how certain joints turn, how they look at certain angles. I feel like from looking through Pinterest, seeing poses, kind of uh, looking at references, over the years, I've kind of just almost like memorized how certain parts of the body look at certain angles. I just know from doing that. But when I did start, I would look up tutorials on how other people would draw bodies. When I would see other artists' sketches, it also helped because then you could see the different ways that people draw guidelines for like how to draw a torso, how to draw legs and stuff. And I would kind of just copy them until I found one that kind of matched how my brain works when I draw a body. And when I struggle with a pose and I have a specific pose in mind that I really want to draw and I'm stubborn and not wanting to change it, that's when I kind of just look in the mirror and try to do the pose, even if I look goofy or even if I feel embarrassed to do it. I take a picture of myself and I just use myself as a reference. And that's how I learned how to draw bodies. For this one, I had a specific pose in mind where I wanted her to be holding this bag and to be like leaning forward and kind of have her other arm up. But then I wasn't really sure like how her legs were supposed to look. Then at the same time I was like, oh, it's not really that important because they're going to be hidden behind her skirt. But I actually had trouble um, trying to know like how the arm that's kind of waving is supposed to look. And so that's when I just got up and I looked at myself in the mirror and I tried to do the pose and I was like, oh, okay, that's how the arm is supposed to look. And so that helped me a lot even when drawing this. I'm really sorry if these tips are not what you wanted because I honestly really don't know how to put into words um, the way my brain works when I draw and I guess how I reach this like level of improvement because it's just been slow throughout the years that like I, I kind of don't really reflect on it too much but it just kind of happens guys I don't know I don't know I'm really bad at explaining stuff but you know practice makes perfect I know everyone probably hates it when they hear that, but it really is true. But I do think one of the biggest things that people kind of tend to ignore is observational drawing. And that's kind of like something that I noticed just recently after going to college and taking drawing classes is that even if it's boring, it really is important. Like, like I know that not a lot of people who are going to be watching this video want to just sit down and draw apples all day and stare at them all day but learning how to draw something just from seeing it even just something like an apple you're gonna take a lot of what you learn from drawing that apple and you're gonna apply it to drawing human beings and it's gonna help like a ton and recently I feel like I've gotten better at drawing hands because of that because I was indeed actually drawing apples in class and then I went home that same night and I was struggling to draw a hand and then I just did the pose with my hand and I was like I ended up unknowingly using the same techniques that I was using with an apple for my hand and I was like wait how did I do that 
Did I actually learn something from college? That's crazy. But yeah, try it out sometimes. You know, it doesn't have to be an apple. It could be something that you actually want to draw. Personally, I find fruits really boring to draw, but just do it. Like do some poses with your hands. Maybe draw something more simple, like a cup. And um, just like try to think of it um, critically. Like be determined to learn something from it and it might actually happen. And now we've reached my least favorite part of the process, which is lining. And because of that, I want to take a break from talking and eat some ruffles. So be right back while I eat some ruffles. Hello, hello, I'm back from eating ruffles. I wanted to ask you guys' thoughts about the beginning part of this video where I was decorating the thing because I did that as kind of a demo for a studio vlog because I want to do those in the future. I am happy to announce that I am officially, officially starting a sticker business. I've bought all the supplies, I've invested time and effort into it, and it's it's happening, guys. It's happening. I talked about it before in a video where I was just like, I, I want to make stickers, and I kind of just went for it, you know? Something new. And it's both exciting and scary at the same time. Exciting because it's a new form of bringing life to my art that I've never done before and it's been so many years since the last time I tried something new with like a medium and my art and it's just like an exciting undertaking but it's also scary because like what if it fails you know there's always that worry of trying something and then not being good at it and so I I'm just trying to think optimistically about it like I guess the worst thing that could happen is that um, no one buys anything and then I just spent all that money on those supplies just to make stickers for myself Which honestly isn't that bad because I love stickers. I could use it to Decorate stuff for my videos. So it's kind of a win-win And I think it'll also encourage me to start journaling and I could also video that Process for you guys because technically that could be an art vlog just me drawing or journaling in my little dotted notebook and putting stickers in it. I mean, I'm pretty sure some people would like to see that, right? So I am in the process of making some Halloween themed stickers with some like little ghosts on it. And I'm just hoping that it'll come in before actual Halloween so that people will still want it by then. It's going to be a lot to handle. I recently just got all like the business licenses and permits and it, it was a lot of work, okay? It was very stressful, but I got through it and now I'm just waiting on my supplies and once I get all that stuff, I want to make a video about unpacking and basically showing you all how I'm going to be preparing my store, 
you're gonna get to see like my trial and error in making the stickers you know get to see all my failures and frustrations my first successes and my triumphs i guess but you know it, it seems fun and i've seen a lot of those types of videos on youtube and i'm just like i want to make my own and it just seems really fun so hopefully that video will come in the future i plan to make frog stickers you guys know how much i love frogs and i've been really practicing drawing them hopefully i've gotten better at it but my actual goal with this shop is to basically make stationery, right? Like for journaling or whatever you want to use it for. But I've been doing a lot of research on stickers lately. I've been seeing what other people do with their shops. And what I see the most of is extremely, extremely cute stickers. And they are mostly pastel colors. And so I was like, personally as a customer, right? It's not really the aesthetic that I'm going for with the stuff that I want to decorate and I'm like I want like colorful kid core type stickers and I couldn't really find much of them I only found like basically one store that had what I was looking for and so I was just like let me just be that store you know and I have this fear that once I start making stickers I begin to kind of compromise my own style and I start to just draw what I know is popular and I stop using bright colors. I go with pastels just like the other shops I see and I just start like copying them. And I really, really want to avoid that because I want to, because I want to have this sticker shop that it's just pure color, it screams color. Like honestly, the vibe that I get from this pumpkin witch illustration and design that I did is exactly the vibe that I want for my store. Knowing that I could do something like this and design that is really encouraging me and making me believe in myself that I can make colorful stickers, you know, like I can make them for myself and if people want them, I can make them for people. And God, it's just, it's really exciting. Like, I, I just want to make stickers already, you know? And I just hope that at least some people will buy them. I'm fairly new to drawing like non-human kind of cutesy stuff, but it'll be, it'll be fun, right? I just hope it goes well. So let me just stop talking about stickers and just actually start to talk about Sydney here. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but Sydney is actually like one of my favorite characters to draw, if not the favorite. I mean, she's my profile picture, so I guess she is the number one favorite, but she's kind of just like this super hyper playful character. And in a way it's like a self insert, I guess, like maybe who I strive to be if this was another life, because I'm a very introverted person. It might not seem like it, I guess, because of the way I talk in these videos, but I, I don't talk like this to strangers. I kind of wish that I did because it, it really just shows like myself, you know? Oh God, I don't know what I'm talking about. But anyway, Sydney, she is supposed to be the main character of the story that I'm creating that has all my characters in it. And she's technically supposed to be half alien. And she's kind of like the main character that gets thrown into an unknown world. And she kind of just has to chaotically figure out like what everything is and what she's doing. She has no clue what she's doing, just like me. And you know, just life happens and she has to deal with it and kind of figure everything out. I've barely written that story, by the way, but I've already gotten so attached to these characters and Sydney specifically, because for some reason, I've just gotten so much more attached to her than everyone else. Maybe because she's the one that I feel like I've drawn the most. I, I don't know, there's just something about her because it's, it's a little weird since when I designed my other characters and I created them, I had a idea in mind already for them. But with Sydney, I just sketched something up real quick and then I ended up liking how it looked. And then she just kind of like 
became character like that was her birth was that i just randomly sketched something without any ideas or anything and then from there it branched out into what she is today and it's just weird how things end up being you know here i am just adding some finishing touches or like extra details once i'm over painting and I gotta say, this crunchy pencil that I made, I thought I would only ever use it for sketching, but I actually really love to use it for overpainting because it just has that nice and crisp texture. So I guess in a way, my everything brush isn't really everything anymore because I use other brushes now. Oh God. But I gave her a lot of like candy corn decorations, a lot of pumpkin stuff. And for some reason, I just love drawing patches. They're just so fun to draw. But I think that these small decorations around her and her like mesh top is really kind of what brought this design together. I just love it. I'm sorry, Jules, but I think I love this design more than I do Jules's vampire design. Because, because this one went so smoothly and with Jules, I had like a vision in my mind that I wanted and then it didn't turn out that way. And that's why I'm kind of like unsatisfied with it. But with this one, I didn't really have a vision in my mind and I kind of just winged everything and it turned out amazing. And so it's kind of like in line with how I created this character to begin with. It's like, I just, just spontaneously created something and um that is it for today and so i hope you guys have enjoyed watching this i also want to congratulate once again the three winners that won from my contest i will be emailing you or dming you on whatever contact you gave me about how you will receive your prize and yeah since i will be drawing everyone who won I'll be dedicating videos, I think, to each character because each one is going to be one drawing. But I will admit right now that it is not exactly a priority of mine for October. For October, I want to stick with drawing Halloween themed stuff. I will be drawing them on the side, but I, I don't want to release those videos until next month. But the people will be getting their prizes, okay? It's just um, everyone else is going to have to wait to see. The drawings. If you like my content, I do have a Patreon that you can support me on and you know you can also subscribe to me on YouTube and like this video if you want. But yeah, see you next time. Goodbye!